biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Now, local experts on the biggest stories throughout the NFL. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens, and thanks for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday. On today's show, the NFC teams in week eight are looking to start off the second half of the season with a bang. But first, we start with the biggest game of the week. The biggest game. Thursday night football's matchup really going to be hard to beat. The Packers and Cardinals totally lived up to the hype. Aaron Rodgers able to lead his team to a big road win, even without some of his best weapons. Locked on Packers breaks down the big statement win. The odds makers said it was just too much. No Devontae Adams, no Al Lazard, no Marquez Valdez-Scantling. And the six and a half point underdog Green Bay Packers would not be able to go into Arizona and get a win. Never tell Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur the odds. I'm Peter Bukowski, host of Locked on Packers. Green Bay goes into Arizona on a short week, and they get a win shorthanded 24-21 on a last-second interception by Rasul Douglas, who was just plucked off the practice squad to give Green Bay the win to seal it in a game where the Packers' running game dominated where Aaron Rodgers threw two touchdown passes to Randall Cobb and the Cardinals turned it over three times, including two interceptions by Kyler Murray to bang down the only league's unbeaten team, Green Bay, moves to 7-1 now at the top of the conference in the NFC despite no Jair Alexander, no Zadarius Smith, no David Bakhtiari, no Devontae Adams, and of course, not those receivers I mentioned, Al Lazard, out because of protocols and MVS still coming off IR with that hamstring injury. This game announces Green Bay as a bona fide contender in the NFC and I think raises real questions about the status of the Cardinals who can't even handle the Packers on a short week. I know Aaron Rodgers. Come on now, this is a game that if you are a real Super Bowl contender, you have to win and win convincingly. Arizona not able to do it. Instead, Green Bay able to announce themselves as true threats for this Super Bowl in a potential last dance season. Now, the Cardinals suffer their first loss of the season in heartbreaking fashion on Thursday night. Kyler Murray picked off in the end zone to end the game, and he comes up limping to boot. Locked on Cardinals has more on the dramatic finish. After a magical run for seven weeks, it was a heartbreaker for the Arizona Cardinals. They fall to the Green Bay Packers 24-21. Kyler Murray throws in an interception that was intended for A.J. Green. Green never looked for the football Cardinals fall for the first time all season long. And Alex, this was a game where there, there were so many big plays within the 10 yard line for both sides. Yeah, this was the first time we saw the Arizona Cardinals make boneheaded mistakes, turnovers that turned directly into a loss. Like the Cardinals have made up for it offensively over the last couple of weeks when Kyler Murray would throw a pick, something like that. But with Rondo Moore uh, muffing the punt, turning into three points, and then Kyler Murray throwing an interception on the opening drive of the second half, turning into a touchdown, you can't make those mistakes against Aaron Rodgers, regardless of who his receivers are and expect to win. They made it close. It wasn't exactly the finish that you wanted, but they've got a long break getting ready for San Francisco in week nine to go try and, you know, take advantage of a lesser than team in the NFC West. Cardinals defense made a huge stand on fourth down to even give themselves an opportunity to win or tie this ball game. Still shocked that it turned into Aaron Rodgers kneeling to, you know, run out the clock. But as you said, this is a team that needs to get healthy. Kyler Murray hobbled on the, you know, in the final drive. DeAndre Hopkins was hurt in this game. J.J. Watt, just a couple days before we find out that his shoulder was absolutely just destroyed. The Arizona Cardinals need to get healthy. They want to continue this magical run in 2021, but they follow the Packers in week eight. Let's go around the league. Elsewhere around the league, the Cowboys are sitting pretty at five and one. Looks like they could run away with the division. But with questions surrounding Dak Prescott's injury, our Locked On Cowboys says that Dallas should be fine as long as it doesn't start to look ahead past Minnesota. Coming out of the bye week, the Cowboys are 5-1, and one, a pretty re- relatively easy schedule the rest of the way. 
and have a pretty straight path to the number one seed in the NFC if they can take care of business going forward. So the key for victory this week against the Minnesota Vikings. Don't forget about the Minnesota Vikings. I'm Landon McCool with the Locked On Cowboys podcast, and all the talk around the on around the team has been about Dax Calf, about the games down the road, a potential for playoff seeding. It's a pretty typical bye week stuff, but the Cowboys cannot forget to t- pay special attention to a Minnesota Vikings team that is probably better than their record and presents at least a difficult matchup problem for the Cowboys, especially on the defensive side of the ball. The Cowboys have to make sure that they take care of business. They have a difficult task going up to Minnesota on a Sunday night game against a team that, if the Cowboys will allow them to, can stay balanced and keep Dallas in a game position that is not comfortable for them to maintain. The Cowboys want to put their, themselves out of reach early so that they force Kirk Cousins to win the football game by throwing the football. But if they take the Vikings lightly, if they don't try to put them away earlier, if, if they let the Vikings hang around with a balanced offense, then the Cowboys could be in for a very long game. Make sure you guys are checking us out on the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Make sure you check out the Lock On Vikings with Luke Braun as well. And until next time, I'm Landon McCool. On the other sideline, the Vikings find themselves in second place in the NFC North on the heels of two straight wins. Minnesota has a shot of getting back above 500 with a win at home in primetime on Sunday night, but it's not going to be easy. Our Locked On Vikings host tells us how they can get that done. So how can the Vikings pull off this Sunday night upset? What's up, everybody? Luke Braun here from the Locked On Vikings podcast. So the key to victory for the Vikings has to be finding a way to get safety help over the top. Vikings are working without their best cornerback, Patrick Peterson, and the Cowboys love one-on-ones with CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper getting gigantic plays all over the field. They cannot leave that one-on-one with like Bashad Breland and Cameron Dantzler. They will get cooked, but to do that, they have to take a safety out of the run game, and if they do that, then it gets that much harder to defend that vaunted power rush game of Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard. So... How do you do that? Uh, Defensive coordinators have been arguing over this for decades, but they have to find a way to stop that run game without leaving their cornerbacks one-on-one. That is the key to slowing down the Cowboys offense that has put up 35 or more points in the last four games, and they're coming off a bye just like the Vikings are. It's going to be a really, really challenging game to slow down the Dak Prescott-led Cowboys. For more on all this, you can find the Locked on Vikings podcast free on all platforms. The winless Detroit Lions gave a valiant effort against the Rams last week. Now they head home to take on Philly. Locked on Eagles breaks down what the Birds need to do on the road to get the win. I'm Louis DiBiase, host of the Locked On Eagles podcast with today's key question for the Birds heading into their Sunday matchup with the winless Detroit Lions. Although the Eagles are favored to win this game, we need to start asking big picture questions about the Eagles. Like we have all year, is Jalen Hurts the long-term quarterback? Is Nick Sirianni the long-term head coach? Is general manager Howie Roseman finally going to be held accountable for putting this team in the position they are right now? Those are some key questions, but a key question for me for this week and for the rest of the regular season, because let's face it, a lot of those other questions can't be answered until the offseason. For me, for the rest of the year, at 2-5, and five, don't really expect a playoff run happening for the Birds this year. I want to see how this coaching staff, how this young team at certain spots how they handle adversity. You already saw defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon get called out by defensive tackle Fletcher Cox. And to me, I want to see if these coaches are going to lose the locker room or are they going to bounce back? Are they going to adjust? And are they going to rally around each other? Say what you will about Doug Peterson and the Eagles in 2018, 2019, and 2020, but they always had each other's back. They always played for Doug and they always came back at the end, went on a run to make the postseason. Will that happen again for this coaching staff? They're not going to make the playoffs, but I want to see them fight in a similar way. Louis DiBiase, Locked On Eagles. The loser of the Panthers-Falcons game this weekend is going to take over last place in the NFC South, not where anybody wants to be at this point in the season. Locked On Falcons says the biggest key for both teams in this game is getting their offenses together and firing on all cylinders. Explosive plays hold the key to an Atlanta Falcons victory over the Carolina Panthers in Week 8. I'm Aaron Freeman with Locked on Falcons. 
An interesting pattern has emerged in regards to both the Falcons and Panthers heading into their Week 8 NFC South clash, and it centers around which team's offense can prove to be more explosive. In the Falcons' three wins this year, they have generated a total of 13 20-plus yard plays to their opponent's five, making for a differential of plus eight. While in their losses, they've generated seven explosive plays in comparison to 17 big plays allowed to their opponents for a big play differential of minus 10. Carolina similarly has a positive plus five differential in terms of big plays in their three wins, but minus six in their four losses this year. This suggests that whichever team's offense proves to be more explosive on Sunday should be the team that should walk away with the W. Of course, Atlanta is coming off a week seven win over Miami in which they generated a season high six big plays while Carolina is coming off a season low of just one in their Week 7 loss to the New York Giants. For more coverage of this Falcons-Panthers matchup, follow Locked On Falcons, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's a wrap for us. Thank you for making Locked On now your first listen every day. For more on the National Football League and your team, make sure you check out Locked On NFL and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kainani Stevens, and this has been Locked On Now.